Sales. Again, my name is Stacey Ubiak, Head of R&D Training at Teva. We can go to the next slide. I want to take you a little bit into what, who is Teva? You know, people always laugh, you know, is that the flip-flop shoe company, you know, Tevas and all this stuff, but no, it's actually Teva Pharmaceuticals, a global leader in, in worldwide medicine, um, 40,000 employees, um, really providing great biopharmaceutical products to patients, improving patients' lives. Um, we specialize in a lot of generics, but we certainly have great um, products and medicine in migraine, in respiratory, in devices, and a lot of other type of different specialty medicine as well. So we're super excited to be here and let you know what we're up to. Um, if you go to the you know, um, next slide. A shout out to my team. I'm joined with Michelle, John, and Christina, as you know. Um, so our mighty team of four, um, our global audience is about 5,000 people, although we have a lot of friends and family within Teva that we ask to join our programs. Um, we're always looking to make things easier on our colleagues and our subject matter experts. Um, we developed a great LXP on our own very ocean inspired. You can definitely see a beach theme here with all of us. Michelle's joined out of St. Augustine. So that's really excited in Florida. Again, this year, last year, all year, great call for upskilling and reskilling. Folks, all the upskilling after the pandemic want to get back into a new workforce. We're really interested in multi-generational learning. So providing enough for all kinds of different generations and different types of learners. So we started Learn, Grow, and Inspire. And we have all of our different offerings all on one site. If we feel like if we can put it somewhere where everyone can find things, we have a really good chance of, of folks accessing things. So next slide. All right. There we go. Okay. Anyway, again, one thing I'm really passionate about is we did 233 compliance training courses last year. Who? It's a lot. And it's a lot for our learners and every group, our own curriculum. And we're really, really interested in making training more impactful, more meaningful, and then certainly more sustainable. So that's where we really called up for seven taps. Love the product. Micro learning allows us to come up with these short scenario based reinforcers where we can just kind of hit them on the key objectives, things that they can be learning, making these really short, important objectives stick and stand out. And we're able to kind of chunk and deliver this content outside of the e-learning. So once you go through, we want people to revisit and take our training again and revisit and, train and revisit the important you know, concepts. So again, try to provide learners with uh, spaced out learning, chunked learning, and little bites of information so that, you know, they're busy. People are really overworked and uh, there's a lot of burnout and we want to, you know, decrease stress and we want to have fun. So our whole premise is heighten the engagement, heighten the learning, and heighten the fun. Really be more excited to come to work, right? Hard. Everyone has to come to work and the grind and the whole nine yards. But I'm going to have Christina talk a little bit of specifically what, you know, we do this and why it's important to us. So thank you all for having me. And Christina, I think we're over to you. Thanks, Stacy. I don't know about you guys, but the audio was a little choppy. I hope you could get the gist. Um, but my name is Christina Pelly, and I am here presenting from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I'm also psyched to be here. I've already learned so much from Mo's presentation and, of course, Gideon. I have a lot to learn, some magic tricks, clearly, to keep my presence, presentations engaging at Teva. But thank you all. Um, okay, so as you can see on the screen, I wanted to open up with this question. I have been at Teva for about two and a half years now, but just before I made the switch, I was a fifth grade English language arts teacher for five years. So as you can imagine, there is quite a bit of overlap in skills used and challenges faced on a daily basis. Same, same, but different, if you will. <laughs> So if you haven't already, please share in the chat what you think about this question. What do fifth graders, so like 10, 11 year olds and pharmaceutical professionals have in common? I'm curious to hear your answers. <laughs> I see short attention span, 
like to ask questions, like to have fun. They know everything. Oh, these answers are great. Keep them coming. Inquisitive, lots of curiosity. Fantastic. Love competition, eager to learn. Thank you all so much. I'm excited to read them all a little bit later. Um, but in the spirit of micro learning, I have boiled it down to just three. <laughs> Here's our pharmaceutical professional and our fifth grader image. So the first one, you guys were right. They learn new material faster when it's chunked and spaced. Stacy definitely touched on this in her introduction. Small microbites over small periods of time or long periods of time. The second one is they benefit from reminders. All of us. Um, well, honestly, teaching and learning is never a one and done. If it were, we would all be geniuses. But learning requires practice and revisiting material at all ages. And then lastly, they like to be entertained while learning. Yep, so exactly like you guys said, um, who doesn't like to have fun while they're learning? It makes time fly and the knowledge linked to memories of having fun really sticks. So I know that what I've just shared is not exactly groundbreaking information, but Stacy and I just wanted to highlight some of the ways that those three simple nuggets on the previous slide have really begun to inform how we write, design, and develop training for R&D colleagues at Teva, a global pharmaceutical company. So I have the pleasure of showing you guys two examples today um, that we have put together. The first one being um, reinforcing compliance training. I know I saw in the chat that someone said, compliance training, my favorite thing. So I don't know if you were being serious. I'm guessing that you were probably joking. Um, but as Stacy mentioned, or you saw on our slide, our small but mighty team puts out SOP and policy training like nobody's business. 233 compliance courses last year, and that doesn't even account for the larger systems trainings that we do. For the most part, we use Articulate Rise for trainings because it allows for rapid development for us, and it's pretty user-friendly for colleagues, which I'm sure you guys are familiar. Well, since we brought on Seven Taps last year, we've actually been embedding microlearnings into our courses. I'm not sure why this isn't. There we go. We've been embedding the seven taps into our courses, kind of like you see here on the screen. Um, for this one, what is a covered clinical study? The beauty of doing this is that once a colleague completes a course on our learning management system, which also another thing, not exactly fun, um, the seven taps gets to take on a life of its own afterwards. So we know that colleagues will rarely, if ever, go back to the LMS to access the full training again. So why not review the summary via mobile when they need to brush up on the content, when they need to remind themselves what a covered clinical study is? So we have made a micro learning gallery that they can do just that. I think I have that on my next slide in just a moment. But they can access the chunked, simplified course material anytime and from anywhere. So really here are key takeaways for reinforcement. Using seven taps for reinforcement is that it immensely helps bring dry, boring compliance material to life through, again, that little bit extra of interactivity in our RISE courses especially the GIFs, the audio, all the fun um, elements of seven taps can really make policy training more lively. And then of course, reinforcement over time really helps the learning stick. So that's my first example. And just to give you an image of our simple micro learning gallery, um, it's really just this. We have all of our trainings on a SharePoint site or all of our seven taps that colleagues can go to anytime on that LXP, the Learn, Grow, Inspire page. 
scan these codes and be brought right back into their seven taps. So the next and the final example of micro learning or seven taps is using it to support professional development programs that we've been running. So what you see on screen was one of my favorites that I've got to work on. Stacy and I collaborated on this one. It was a session for managing difficult conversations with a group of executive leaders in R&D. So after a two hour long workshop that they all attended, we sent out a seven taps review that not only covered the key points of the training, but actually showed these two avatars. I'm sure you all are familiar with the faces having a non exemplar conversation, AKA what not to do in a high stakes or difficult conversation. So it was pretty funny fun, but it also helped colleagues recall and identify some of the principles that they just learned in the training. So I put that QR code on the screen for a reason. You're more than welcome to scan it and check out this learning. So yeah, definitely do. We'd love to hear your feedback. Yes. Thanks, Stacy. So our key takeaways really from this example were, again, short and sweet. Um, Scenario-based learning and storytelling truly are the way to go, not just for 10-year-old kids, like I mentioned before, but this method of teaching and learning really puts learners in the situation so that they're both confident and competent when they have to perform. And again, seven taps make it makes it so easy for us to do that. Rapid development to the max. Um, looking back, I wish I had a tool like seven taps when I was in the classroom. The students would have freaked out. So with that, um, Stacy, I'm glad your mic is still on. We would love to just wrap up with some final thoughts um, before closing up. Um, as you can see here, our team is really striving to be disruptors, right? It's so easy in our industry to fall into the trap of, oh, this is how SOP training has always been done. Just a simple read and sign. Let's keep it that way. But really, there's so much room for fun and innovation in the training space, which I know that I'm literally preaching to the choir when I say that. Um, but looking to the future, we're excited to bring seven taps into the onboarding sphere for new employees. Um, of course, encourage more mobile learning and games for all of our R&D colleagues, especially with an organization like Teva. We have employees in labs, behind desks. We have them in factories. They're all over the place. So mobile learning is key. Um, and then potentially even for inspection readiness and ICH guidelines, new information, critical information for pharma professionals that's coming out soon. So thank you, everyone. I think I ended on time. Um, but Stacy, did you have anything else to add in? You were great. You were right on time. Oh, thank Bro, you. you. I think it's great. I think it's coming in and saying... Yeah. Right on time. No, 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 no. I joined. I joined because you were coming to an end, and there were some questions and things like that that I figure. You know what? You guys are running right on time. <laughs> it actually opens up enough time for us to ask some questions, have some conversation along the way. And you know, I I loved the story you told. I I ran learning and development for a division of Abvi Pharma, regulatory, and I can relate to the challenges that you have. Where sometimes it was. Well, this is just what we have to do. And, you know, so I am curious, you know, were there any things that you found? I mean, obviously we're talking about the content design, some of those things that helped you get that across the board. Cause I have no doubt you had, there had to be some people who were a little bit skeptical going like, I, I don't know about this. Is this really going to work type of a thing? Totally. Well, we definitely have some folks in that area that are skeptical, so skeptical and it Everyone. What we're finding, though, is if we can put it with our brand from the brand center with meaningful examples and with some embedded questions and examples and questions, people start to really see the value, too. You know, not all office memes are for everyone. You know, not everyone loves the, you know, the memes. Some people are mean people, some people aren't. But again, we're trying to make it 
so that it's more palatable for multi-generational, multi-background mm -hmm. types of learners. And again, um, yeah, we can always super fun everything up, but we try to make it engaging and it's definitely drip learning. It's definitely more impactful. That's for sure. Okay. Well, and I'm sure it's one of those, you know, you start small, you make some small strategic influences and then over yep. time, I think, I think, you know, you, you don't, you don't boil the ocean at once. You, you take some of those strategic strikes, people start seeing the difference and then it's going, but I think it's a great story to tell because I think there's so often we run into these things where we go, it's, we've just never done it that way. And it can feel onerous to be the one that tries to, to pave that road for the first time. And, and the fact you've done it and do you find it's easier now that you've built some street cred with the org? Oh, absolutely. We get feedback like, oh, we love the QR codes. We should use QR codes for more things. And even it. just teams across R&D wanting to use some of this in their team meetings. And okay. we have, it's a good problem to have. A lot of people asking for trainings. So Yeah. Well, and I think that can be an encouragement to everybody. And, and we're definitely trying to use it for like town halls. Like yes. we're trying to hook on with the communication speech. We're trying to say, wow, well, after you know, went to town hall, what are some key messages you might people what is, might want to read and really influence that people come away with? So yeah. communications are starting to get really hooked into it too. So that's exciting. Well, and I think that's a really important point for, for people to consider, because I think sometimes we can operate in our silo of learning and development and not think, hey, you know, some of the cool stuff we're doing. And I know as I got to know the seven taps team early on, you know, the, the comms and change management, that micro learning mm -hmm. is a huge aspect of that. Going back to Mo's conversation on, on nudging, you know, how do you actually just push these nudges along the way? So I think it's great you're you're ca crossing company lines and or functional lines doing cool stuff and doing it in an environment that uh if 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 anybody watching has not worked in in pharma <laughs> that could be that could be a difficult industry to drive really progressive change so to do it hats off to to stacy you and christina you and the rest of the team because that is that is a big achievement thanks chris <laughs>